I started my career in 1998 uh, summer in Düzen Laboratory. This is in Mecidiyeköy. I love this laboratory very much and I was like, uh, uh, not literally, but sleeping on their doorway, I think. Uh, take me into the lab. I will do anything. I will, I will, I will take your carry your things, something like that. And I carry things that summer. But I like this experience a lot. Design laboratory still uh, have a um, special place in my uh, career because I, there I worked with uh, not that I worked, but I observed uh, uh, people working on. Duchenne muscular dystrophy and still 20 years later there is no cure for Duchenne muscular dystrophy so it's uh, uh, it's important and also during my undergraduate I worked in the behavioral neuroscience laboratory but it was in a psychology department and I integ I was I joined some very exciting uh, experiments including rats and I was bitten by rats by the way <laughs> it was very exciting so neuroscience had been my um, dream subject but up until like 2012 I couldn't start studying on neuroscience because there wasn't any uh, PI working on neuroscience in Turkey so I went to uh, Ankara University and I worked on hepatitis viruses. So uh, sometimes uh, young people are asking me um, which subject should they uh, choose. And I answered like, wherever you are accepted will be your subject of choice. So you don't have any choice in this uh, area. Like uh, no one is that luxurious. Uh, so you start somewhere and it doesn't matter actually. Working on hepatitis viruses and working on the brain is not that different from each other because you are working on the cell biology and the cell is the same cell in the liver or in the brain almost. So I started with hepatitis and liver diseases. I worked in the uh, Ankara University Medical School and then I continued into uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, which is liver cancer, during my PhD studies. And we did some uh, liver cancer profiling uh, in patient material. Then uh, in the start slide, I had, uh, I, I uh, joined a group from electro, electromagnetics group, and this is actually my husband. Uh, he's a professor in Otto now. So uh, we did some, uh, maybe you know, there is a flow cytometry machine that sorts um, cells from each other. So this was, we developed an algorithm to use, to be used in the cell uh, sorter machines. It's done. And then this is where I started neuroscience. It's uh, in Wilkent University and with Michelle Adams. She's an American, but living in Turkey for a very long time. And then we started doing our uh, experiments. This is an, another interesting thing. Um, we developed, uh, we published um, a machine for um, injection system for the brofesh, and we collaborated with uh, mechanical engineering people in here. So you can collaborate with engineers, actually. Um, the translation of the language is difficult between ourselves. We don't understand each other, but it works at some point. After, uh, after a couple of months, you start understanding each other. And, uh, I like teaching a lot. These are the students uh, and the courses I taught in Bilkent University. Uh, then I quit um, giving lectures and I started my outreach. Uh, activities, outreach activities that, that like outreach, like you are reaching the people outside of this, outside of the academia. And I started going to the schools. Um, this uh, was my own project, and I came up with this uh, by myself. So, in the first year, 
I was very doubtful. Like every school, I was like going and then coming back home. And I was thinking that what the hell I am doing? Like I, ha I was so uh, doubtful about what I was doing because I didn't know the effect I was uh, giving. I didn't know the uh, how it will um, end up. And if I was afraid that she might like complain about me and like. Çocuklarımızdan neler öğretiyorsun type of uh, complaining. And I was very afraid, very scared all the year. And at the end of the year, I was selected as park yaratanlar, the change makers. And then I said, oh, okay, I, I was doing something good. So, uh, so I continued. In the first year, I visited only 20 schools and then I continued. And the very nice thing about this project is uh, from the first school, third school, I visited. I um, uh, that visit was actually uh, I felt awful. Uh, it wasn't a successful talk, and it wasn't a successful visit uh, in terms of the students and the teachers. I didn't have the outcome that I was expecting. But uh, from that school, I have a student right now uh, working with me, and she's working with me for the last four years. Uh, because she listened to me and then she decided to uh, go into molecular biology. She just graduated from Otto MBG and she's been in touch with me since then, since I visited their school. But she wrote to me a year after I visited their school. So I didn't see the outcome of that uh, action um, for a year. And after a year, I had a feedback. So if you do not have feedback, if you do not have an outcome, you may in the future and don't just uh, don't just feel uh, don't don't just worry about it. I worry all the time and uh, worrying is my second name. So uh, you can worry, but just do not quit. You can worry, but do not quit. And Avil is one example. I have a lot of examples now. Actually, uh, almost all of my uh, group members are from my uh, activities that I uh, met during my activities, either through YouTube or the school visits. And this is my quote. Mm. And this is my motto, life motto, because uh, what you learn is from your failures. Um, failure is a popular subject now, but I re recognize this before it was popular. So failures is more important because in my life, um, the success, if success is one, the failures are 10. For example, Tubitac project applications. Um, the Tubitac has a system for projects, like a uh, project archive system. And I open it and the uh, funded projects that are true, and then it says rejected projects and it keeps it there just that I ha I see it every day. Like there are like 20 projects that are rejected by Tubitak. So uh, and I see it every day. So it's very um, uh, it's a nice learning curve. <laughs> you see what is the uh, approved project and what are not and so how I can continue. So and whenever you are successful, somebody says, for example, if I go to a school and everybody says, oh, it was wonderful, it was perfect. It doesn't um, get me anywhere like, OK, I become happy. Nice to hear that, for example, but uh, it doesn't teach me anything. So um, sorry, criticism is good. And this is me being uh, small celebrity. And now uh, let's talk about some science. This project, um, we were developing an algorithm for the um, dividing cells, but we did not continue this. This uh, discontinued because we, we couldn't do it and we couldn't succeed in this. And then this project is, I um, barely. Uh, joined in this project. Uh, most of the work has been done by 
Michelle, who you see, and I, Senor. But in this one, uh, there are four cortical dynamics and perception lab. Uh, we are using zebrafish and they um, take a recording of the zebrafish and then how they are moving, they uh, produce uh, codes, algorithms uh, to understand that. Aysha Nur is a, I think, psychology graduate, who you see. Hoja is from electronics engineering. So uh, in this project, psychology, molecular biology and Electrical electronics engineering are working together, and then uh, this project is again Michelle's project. I am a Danishman in this, uh, and she is working on caloric restriction. And for caloric restriction, uh, I don't know if you know it. Uh, I hate this knowledge, and I hate it every day. Caloric restriction extends your life, and I cannot restrict any of my calories. I'm uh, like I'm. I'm functioning on chocolates, basically, so, but this is what we were working, and this is science, you cannot deny it, so caloric restriction extends your life, but, and it works through m pathway, the uh, target of rapamycin pathway, and we are using rapamycin to mimic the effects of the caloric restriction. Now, this is the most important project in my life now, for the last three years, I've been uh, principal investigator on this project, and we have we are a huge group. Mehmet Soman, he is an evolutionary biologist in Otsi. Can, computer scientist. Mustafa Hoca is working on fisheries. Uh, Olgun is a psychologist. So uh, it is Injikefali. It's the endemic species in Turkey. Perlmule, uh, the uh, English um, name for the fish, and the, you can see the fish in here. They are endemic and they are a very, very important species because they can, uh, their cells can function, they can basically live in one uh, gölü, a lake one. And as you might know, a lake one has a high pH and high salt concentration. And no other species can live in that condition, only uh, as a big organism, not a microscopic organism, but a big organism, and kefali is a big fish, and they live in that high pH, high salt water, but more importantly, they travel against the uh, current, against the current to the uh, rivers, as you might, you may see in here, it's, a, it's against the current, and then they go to the um, non-salty uh, water, the river, and then they leave their fish, uh, they leave their eggs there, and then go back to the one lake. So, in a window of one week, they can switch from high pH, high salt, to neutral pH, neutral salt. If they have stayed only in the lake, that would be okay, maybe, because they, you would say that during million years of evolution, they have adapted to the high pH. But because they are switching from uh, pH and salt conditions, it is it makes them extremely uh, exciting, and they are endemic because uh, illegal trade, as we might guess, uh, the ten tons of injikefali fish is exported illegally every year. So we are not surprised. Uh, we expect that. So uh, this is the genome project of this fish. And for the genome project, uh, we obtained the DNA and we obtained RNA. And now we sequenced uh, DNA in pet bio in systems in the United States. And the RNA in Illumina systems in China. And then, because the genes are not annotated, it means that, for example, in human, you know that this is the gene and it is called this and it's called encodes a protein that. So we do not know it's, it's not annotated in this fish. So for the last three years, the team is working on it. I have no idea what we are doing. I'm just the uh, uh, coordinator, the, the uh, Mali Işler Sorumlusu. Um, 
I'm I'm coordinating everything like logistics and purchasing and who is going there and what are you doing people the final is coming final report so we are finishing this project uh, I don't know what they are doing means that I know obviously what they are doing but the coding portion uh, I don't know um, at this point I would like to say that it is very important that you start learning a coding language so I cannot learn it now I tried but I cannot learn it but my students know not only CS students but our students molecular biology and genetics uh, graduates know um, coding by coding I mean R, uh, the language R, 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 and Fortran, Java, Matlab, I think this is it. Um, they know these and most of the analysis is done on the bioinformatics and is done on the computers these days. So isolation and the sequencing of the DNA took only one month, but in the remaining 35 months, it was all um, on the computers. And it will take you a couple of steps further uh, from other students, because whenever someone says that I know R, it is uh, a point of like employ employability uh, criteria. And uh, and the good thing about learning algorithms is that you can learn it by yourself in the computer. All you need is a computer, and then you can learn it. And it doesn't have to be a fancy computer. You can uh, learn it in any small computer because you can uh, connect to the servers. Um, Tubicap have some servers, and you can connect them. So uh, I strongly advise you to. Uh, learn some bioinformatics. In general, it is bioinformatics. And this is my Ghost Baby project, uh, HTART Gene Promoter Region. This is where I apply uh, my molecular biology knowledge. And I feel that I'm a molecular biologist. I'm not a Mohtebeji. I'm a molecular biologist. This uh, project reminds me that we are working on the uh, promoter of the uh, TART gene which is coding for telomerase and which is reactivated in brain cancers. In brain cancers um, there is something called glioblastoma. There is a disease called glioblastoma and it's a very invasive cancer and that is what we are working on in the glioblastoma cell lines we try to silence the TARC gene promoter and uh, Naz was working on it and she left uh, now for France but we still continue the project and this is uh, another project we were working on zebrafish and we obtained some stem cells from the zebrafish, aging zebrafish and then um, we sequenced them and find the uh, differentiating genes during aging. This, this project is finished and it is published, by the way. Now, this is the team who was working on the projects. Now, all of them has uh, gone somewhere. Nazla is an LMU mini and Özge is there as well. Esra is in Singapore. Uh, Tegev Bursu, there is a scholarship from Turkey Eğitim Vakfı. She went there with this, and now uh, she's, she has done uh, the majority of the uh, TART work, and she's in Nice, France, and she's working on a telomere. She's working with a telomere guy uh, who is working with telomere for 50 years, I think. <laughs> He's not 50. And this is Begun. Begun is still here. Uh, so in all of my projects, she worked. Yeah, we worked together. So. She's still here, uh, graduating from PhD. And this is my family. A Köfte, uh, he left us. <laughs> He's not dead, but 
he left us for a uh, handsome guy, uh, handsome dog, and he's now living in uh, Eymirgölü in Ostu. And these are our cats, and this is my husband, he's a professor now. I won't go into these, and uh, this is like the uh, literature um, summary for the adult neurogenesis. I will only say that adult neurogenesis is the formation of new brain cells in the uh, brain and it decreases during aging but it never like stops uh, our brains never stop producing new neurons if you are in your 20s you are um, here and you have a lot of neurogenesis events taking place in your brains but this is a very debatable subject and it's a hot topic and we like this um, we like this subject a lot. It's not a direct project of us, but we in integrate neurogenesis in every uh, in every project of ours. Like we uh, label the cells. I will show you in a minute how we study it. Then zebrafish. It's a very popular uh, model organism. So uh, we started with uh, comparing zebrafish during aging process and this is the thing how we study neurogenesis BRD is a timing analog and we inject fish with BRD and then we leave the fish uh, for four hours in the aquarium and euthanize them and in this four hours if the cells have been replicated their DNA they will be positive for BRDO. If the cell has not uh, been divided, then it will be negative. So this shows us that that instant moment, in that four hours of our uh, window, uh, how many cells were actively dividing, and it shows us the neurogenesis rate. And it is very easy to do in zebrafish, and it is impossible to do in humans. So uh, that's why in humans the subject is debatable. And this is uh, how we inject the zebrafish, and this is actual dimensions of it. And this is David Malcolm Office's sponge here, and uh, very scientific. Then we take the brain out, and we take thin slices in the vibratome. This is the vibratome. It takes slices from the brain. Its only function of this uh, machine is that. And this, I have three uh, episodes of Vibrotone video on YouTube. Or we digest it with papain or similar enzymes and put it into cell cultures. Now, if we take thin slices like this, then the results will be, the process will be like this. We take a fish and then um, take 10 slices, like 50 micrometers, and then immunostaining, and then um, scan it in confocal, and then construct the images like this. So, uh, this is the one uh, slide of zebrafish brain, and all of these white dots are the cells that were dividing at that moment, uh, BRU positive cells, uh, and all these red dots are uh, single neurons or single cells, not neurons, single cells. So the fish has a lot of uh, cells as you might see in here and these areas are empty, look like empty, but they're not empty actually. Uh, the axons are um, extending into the inward of the brain. In zebrafish, uh, the localization is like this. In human, the nuclei, nuclei will be in the center and the axons will be extending outwards. So, um, among all of these cells, you can count the replicating cells. Uh, they're not much, but still uh, they are proliferating. So, we can compare the effect of anything on neurogenesis with this method. Like, we can compare it during aging or we can compare it during calorie restriction or we can give a chemotherapeutic drug to the fish and then uh, change, uh, look for the change in neurogenesis. So this is one of the um, 
Uh, one of the methods that we uh, like a lot and uh, we have good results. This is a more close-up picture and this is a published picture. Now, you see here there is a BRB positive cell and this fish was transgenic. Transgenic means in the GFAP promoter, uh, we cost you construct something, some vector that in the GFAP promoter uh, you will have GFP. GFAP is, uh, it's like a tekerleme but um, not that complicated actually. GFAP is a marker for supporting cells in the brain, which we call glia. It's a glia marker and GFP is the GFP uh, green protein. So whenever the GFAP gene is active, in that cell, you see it as a uh, green uh, cell. We did not do this, we, we just purchased it, the uh, zebrafish line. You can purchase zebrafish lines, it's very easy. Um, so these are the glia, and these are the neurons because it was stained with neuronal marker. And when you overlap them, you can see that this is uh, glia because it is overlapping with the, the glia. So this is the glia replicating, or this is more something overlapping with a neuron. So it works like this. And these are confocal scans. Uh, confocal scans uh, is important if you have a thick tissue. If you have single cell layer, then you can look at it in the fluorescent microscope. And if on the other hand, if you digest the brain, uh, we isolate the neural, ne neurons uh, with a kit, neural tissue dark dissociation kit, and then take them into cell culture, and they look like this. I like this image a lot. Uh, these are the cell nuclei, and the cytoplasms are very, very small. Like, uh, you have the <laughs> As I was talking about cellular destruction, see, I'm living with you. If this is the nuclei, then if the cytoplasm is just around the nuclei, then it is itself an indicator that it's a progenitor cell. If a cell is actively divided, it cannot extend its cytoplasm. So you can say that it's a progenitor cell, like a stem cell. But if the cytoplasm is extended, so you see in here maybe, uh, it means that it's a, a quiescent cell, like non-dividing cell. So even by looking at this, we can say that these colonies are stem cell colonies in the zebrafish brain. And then we stain them and uh, see what they are. Like you can see here, this is all the cells uh, present in that uh, colony, one colony. And these are the BRD positive cells. So you may see that it's a very distinct colon, like not this one, but the one passing through like this. So you can identify each cell in a colony by just staining. And also there are some indirect methods, like uh, Western blot. We um, take the cells and then uh, isolate the proteins and upload them onto gel electrophoresis and see some uh, horrible uh, bands. Uh, I hate Western blot uh, at times because it takes three days and then you have some bands and you have no idea what they are. So um, microscope is usually my first choice. Um, Western is my, I don't know which choice. And also there is the qPCR, PCR, and also there is RNA sequencing. We take the RNA from these cells, and I said in here to be top map, but these days we are sending them to China because it's more, it's cheaper and faster, and have a sequence, and then the bioinformatics uh, people, which are my students again, um, they analyze and see the change of genes. This might be my second uh, method of choice because it's easier. 
And then you have the genes, like gene lists, which are changing from young to old and whatever you are working on. And you have a long list of genes that are changing. And this is my end slide. These are the uh, projects I talked about are uh, either finished or we are trying to finish them. And with these young people, uh, we hope that we will start new projects, which uh, obviously depend on Tubita, because uh, I applied like, I think, six, I, I did, I think, six applications in the last three months. So if any one of them is uh, approved, we can start our uh, studies. But nowadays we are um, doing some extension of the previous projects. And I'm teaching these guys about the methods that I've mentioned now. Thank you.